All right, we are on to chapters 25 and 26. Chapter 25, Jesus is no pushover. Nope, nothing. My pockets are empty. Nothing tucked into my Bible case. Nothing slipped into my hand. <clears throat> Let's get started, dudes and dudettes. After two days in Samaria, Jesus went on to Galilee to the village of Cana. Remember, that's the town where he turned water into wine. A dude who worked for the government in the town of Capernaum, about a day's journey away, had a little boy who was very sick. The government dude went to Jesus and begged him to come to Capernaum to heal his son, who was on death's door by then. Just go home, Jesus said. Your son will live. Somebody checked their sundial and saw it was 1 p.m. The man nodded and started to head home. The night passed and a new day began. Before the man reached home, his servant ran out to meet him and announced excitedly that his son was alive and not sick anymore. What time did he get better? The man asked. Yesterday at 1 p.m., they said. Yep, that's the exact time Jesus had told him his son would get better. After that, the man and his household all trusted Jesus and whatever he said. They weren't dummies. Jesus came to the village of Nazareth where he'd grown up. He went to the synagogue, sort of like a church, on the Sabbath, the day they worshipped, and stood up to read the scriptures, a common practice back then. Any visitor could do that. Somebody handed Jesus the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unscrolled the scroll and read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Jesus rolled the script, scroll back up and said, That's me. That's who Isaiah was talking about. I'm here to bring the good news to the poor. I'm here to set the captives free. I'm here so the blind will see. I am here so that people everywhere will be set free. The time of God's favor has come. The scripture you've just heard has been fulfilled this very day. If anybody had been paying attention to the scripture and had put it together with the amazing things Jesus had been doing, they would have caught on that Jesus was the promised Savior, God the Son. But the people who heard Jesus that day in Nazareth just sort of murmured along to themselves, kind of grumbling. Yeah, but isn't that guy Joseph's son? Like, we all know Jesus, and we remember when he was just a kid, playing on the floor of the carpenter's shop, drinking root beer and eating fruit snacks. Now he's all grown up and saying he's here to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah? Really? Jesus said, hey, I know what you're thinking, but no prophet is ever accepted in his, own his hometown. Then the people got ticked at Jesus really ticked. A bunch of them jumped up and mobbed him. They shoved and kicked and moved as a group with Jesus right in their middle all the way towards the edge of a cliff. Throw him off, someone yelled. Yeah, someone else shouted. Make him hurt. But Jesus did something. We don't know exactly what. Maybe he gave them some kind of a God look. For sure, he did something that made everyone stop their shoving and yelling and take a half step back from Jesus. He passed right through the crowd away from the cliff and went on his way. Yep, Jesus was no pushover. This wasn't the last time Jesus would get into a hairy situation. We'll hear about a couple more soon. For now, remember, God loves all types of people through Jesus, even those who are different from you, even doubters and grumblers, and especially those who are hurting. Okay, see you later, skaters. Kirby's notes stick inside your brain. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. Want to read more? Read John 4, 43 through 54, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2, and Luke 4, 14 through 30. Chapter 26. Jesus meets some sick dudes. You'll never guess what? I could hardly believe myself. Zuri Claire wrote me a note. She gave it to Aisha, who gave it to Aggie, who gave it to Olivia, who gave it to Emma, who gave it to me. It said, Dear Kirby, do you like movies? Do you like books? Do you like ice cream? Do you like dogs? Sincerely, Zuri Claire. Wowee, that Zuri Claire sure has a way with words. <clears throat> hey there, class. Did I tell you that Peter the Rock was married? We know that he was married because he had a mother-in-law who got very sick. She took her bed with a high fever. You know how yucky you feel when your mom checks on you with a thermometer and shakes her head and her mouth goes into a grim line? Well, this woman felt way worse. Please heal her, everyone begged, probably because they really liked her a lot. Jesus simply went to her bedside, took her by the hand, and helped her sit up. 
Then Jesus rebuked the fever. What does it mean to rebuke something? Well, you scold it. You tell it, knock it off. That's what Jesus did with that fever. The fever left and Peter's mother-in-law became perfectly healthy again. She got up and fixed them a meal because that's what grandmas like to do and she knew they all had good, healthy appetites. Word got around about miracles like this that Jesus kept doing and more and more people followed Jesus. Okay, you need to know that one of the grossest, most feared diseases in those days was called leprosy. The disease caused a person to lose feeling throughout their body. So people would cut themselves and not know it or step into a fire without noticing and just let it burn till their foot smelled like barbecue monkey meat. Or they'd break an ankle just because they kept walking on it until it filled with pus. Leprosy is still around these days, although not many people get it. But if you were a leper in Jesus's day, you had to keep your distance from people and yell, unclean, unclean, because this horrid disease was really contagious. It's no way to live, said anyone who ever had it. One man with an ugly case of leprosy didn't follow the rules. We don't know what he looked like, but if leprosy was advanced, then it's safe to say he was no picture postcard. I mean, nose missing, eyeballs falling out of their sockets, no fingers, only three teeth left. He walked right up to Jesus and knelt at his feet. I beg you to hear, I bet you could hear the crowd gasp in horror. If you are willing, the man said, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus felt compassion for the guy. He'd reached out and touched him. That was a crazy move right there, because back then, people didn't go around touching lepers. But Jesus didn't mind. He was going to help the man no matter what people thought. I'm willing, Jesus said, be healed. Instantly, the man was healed. Wow, can you imagine that scene? Poof! Instantly, the guy had a nose again. The thunk. Eyeballs all back in their sockets. Zip, zip, zip. Fingers grow while you blink. This guy's clean, healed, all better. Jesus thought the former leper not Jesus told the former leper not to tell anyone who did this for him, but of course the man told everyone. The reports of Jesus' power spread faster and farther, and then the crowds grew bigger and bigger. Jesus wasn't trying to draw a big crowd. That's not what he was all about. He was never a show-off, and he didn't want to draw attention to the officials, because that would mean big trouble. After healing people, Jesus never made a big announcement. Instead, he often went away by himself so he could pray. We'll see him meet some more oddballs next week. Kirby's notes stick inside your brain. When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Mark 2, 17. Want to read more? Read Mark 1, 4 through 45, and Luke 4, 38 through 40, and 5, 12 through 16. We'll see what happens next. See you later, guys.